So, the first half of ReZero Season 2 is officially over as of yesterday, uh, from when I'm recording this video, not from when this video releases. But yeah, that was that was a hell of a season. I'm a little sad we're gonna have to wait until I believe January of next year to have it come back and finish the second part of the second season, but I'm really happy with what we got so far. And the most important thing that we got so far was a whole bevy of new waifus to add to the pool. And so I decided to go ahead and do a waifu list for ReZero, encompassing all of the waifus up through where we've aired so far. Because I'm gonna be honest, some of the characters that were introduced in Season 2 have really shaken my understanding of who Best Girl is in this series. If you follow me on Twitter or are in the Discord, you know how I feel about this. But let's just go ahead and show you what I'm thinking. Okay, so I've got all of my waifus loaded in right down here. And it looks like it may have put these in alphabetical order, which is fine. So we're going to start with Anastasia. I, I, never, I never really liked her. I think she's pretty bad. But given some of the other options on this list... I'm gonna throw her in D tier, just because, like, she's manipulative, but she can still be helpful in that respect, so she's not the bottom of the bottom, but eh, not still not great. Beatrice, Betty, Bayako, whatever you want to call her. I love Beatrice. Um, not as a waifu, though. She's, she's a good character. As a waifu, though, better than Anastasia, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put her in a C tier. I don't know, some of the developments that we got on her character so far in this season if this goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Spoilers for season two of ReZero throughout the rest of this video, because I'm going to be talking about their character development and the things they do. With things that Beatrice has said and done in this season, I feel sorry for her more than I feel like a waifu connection there. So C tier for, for her, not because she's a bad character, though. Carmilla, the Witch of Lust. Um, she was adorable. She was- I was not expecting the Witch of Lust to be just, like, cute. Yeah, no, she was- she was one of the ones that- I think all of the witches, in their own way, really helped, uh, Subaru in the last episode. I think her encouragement was- was really cool, though. That said, we didn't- we didn't get to see that much of her, so I don't really know how to feel, so I'm gonna throw her in the middle at a C tier. Just cause I- I don't know- I don't know enough about her yet. Okay, so going into this season, it was very clear-cut for me. Crucia's best girl in the series, right? I think she's great. I still think she's great. And for the reason that I think she's great, she's going in S tier. That said, even though she is in S tier, she is no longer best girl in the series for me as of right now. And that's not something that I change frivolously. No. This is this was a big decision for me. God, I'm such a weeb. We'll we'll get to that in a minute though. So next up we have Daphne, the witch of gluttony. I hate this character like just horrifying and i know that she kind of also stood up for subaru in the last episode but it was mostly because he was talking some mad shit and she just wanted to see if he was still about it so she's gonna let him live a little bit longer to see if he's about it no she she is f tier just absolute bottom no no daphne hunger loli is terrifying echidna okay hot take i don't think her proposal was that bad like it would have caused horrible distress on him in every way possible, but he had already kind of committed to that. And I know, I know it's a really big character moment for him to decide that he isn't going to abuse his return by death because it like he needs to care about himself or whatever. And that's important. That's a cool character moment. I loved it. I would have taken the offer, personally. I think Echidna actually got a little bit better for me as a character when she dropped the act and was just like, here is exactly what I want and what it will cost you for me to do that. So yeah, I, I like Echidna, actually, and I'm, I'm gonna put her in a B tier even after the big twist. Okay, we got we got Elsa. I You could, I guess, view her as a Yandere. I kind of don't. I just view her as a sadistic sociopath. I, I don't think she has any redeemable quality other than titty. So yeah, she's, she's gonna chill in the F tier with Daphne. Maybe that's just me. Maybe there is some great quality about her that I don't know that comes out later. I kind of doubt it. Amelia. Okay, we're getting into the some of the main characters here. I never really liked Amelia that much. She feels a little bit too bland and generic for me. That's that's the problem with a lot of main girls for, for me in anime is they a lot of them more or less have this just okay personality that, that's really safe. In fact, I think the most distinct personality we've seen from Amelia is when she flips her shit and goes full Yandere in that one episode. And that was awesome. Not waifuable, but awesome. So maybe she'll pick up later in the series, but for me right now, she, she's just too bland and I'm, I'm gonna have to give her a dead C tier. Felix. 
Felix is going in C tier for cat and no other reason. Yeah. Why do I always lean so center heavy on these things? Is it because I'm horribly indecisive? No, can't be that. Felt. I like Felt. Felt's really cool. Um, I really want to see where her character goes for the rest of the series because we kind of got left on a little bit of a cliffhanger with her being part of the royal selection process and the whole like coming up from nothing and suddenly being thrust into the spotlight. I think that's going to be a cool character arc. Um, no, I, I really like Felt. I'm, I'm going to put her in the B tier. She's pretty cool. Frederica is another character that I want to see a lot of. I like both her and Garfield as characters. I'm curious if we ever get to see them interact with each other because I think that would be a cool dynamic. I'm, I'm going to need to see a little more of her, but I'm gonna go ahead and act on my gut and put her in B tier as well. She seems like, she's pretty high waifu. I, I like waifu fangs, you know, just like the one little fang, and she's got a whole mouth full of them, so that's just more fang to love. Little terrifying, little terrifying, but you know, we'll, we'll run with it. We make sacrifices for our waifus. Here we go, okay. I was not expecting this character to show up. Just kinda happened, she was there for about a minute in one episode, and in that one minute that she was there, I knew she was best girl of the series. My best o meter just went completely off the charts and she backed it up. I am of course talking about Minerva who is going up in S tier with Cruz. She is best girl of the series. I'm calling it, I'm claiming it, mine. And she held that up in the last episode as well. She was the first one to start advocating for Subaru to take care of himself a little bit, but also to not, I, I don't know, to, to not go with Echidna, even though I just said that I would have taken the offer if Minerva had offered, I would have taken that. She seems very straightforward with who she is, unlike the rest of the witches who have ulterior motives. And I'm sure she probably has some degree of that, but honestly, she seems to be the most blunt, the most direct, and I think that is great waifu material. Also, uh, Tsundere's man. I have a weakness, I know that. Um, if I own it, then it becomes a personality trait. I like Tsundere's. It's not an addiction, it's not a problem, I don't need help, I just need more Tsundere's. Priscilla, I I hate Priscilla. Just such a dog shit character. Absolute bitch E tier on that one. Because even though I think she's a horrible human being, she is at least not a murderous sociopath or a murderous sociopath like our two F tier candidates. Ram, okay. Hot take, hot take. Ram is better than Rem. Not by much, but by a little bit. So Ram is going in an A tier for me. Her personality is just a little bit more distinct. It's not something that you see in every anime. And I'm, I'm actually going to go ahead and place Rem also before I talk about this because Rem is also going in an A tier. They're both in A tier. Rem is just better because Rem's personality is cool in that she is very open about how she feels about Subaru and things like that. She And she has to get there. Obviously, she isn't at the beginning because she mercs him repeatedly, mind you. But Rem is also very genuine in her own way, even though she's very dry and sarcastic. There are times when she can, through doing that, just get to the heart of a matter. And in the same way that I appreciate Minerva's bluntness, Rem really does it for me. She's just good to your waifu, does not get the love that she deserves. And Rem is, Rem is still great, um, better than Amelia, just not best girl, just not best girl. I'm sorry. I respect people who like Rem, you're just wrong. Niuzu, okay. Damn, don't, don't know how to feel about that one. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter if we're talking about the original or the clones, because we haven't met the original yet. We've just met a bunch of the clones. Cool, again, cool character, just not, not a waifu. Not a waifu. I'm gonna put her in a D tier because I still hate Priscilla more. Satella. I think we all knew that one of two things was going to happen when Satella showed up. She was either going to be the most heinous villain in the series, or one of the best waifus in the series. Luckily, it was the latter. She is fantastic. I love Satella. Not enough to put her in an S tier, but definitely good enough to go up an A tier. I'm super hyped to get more information on her. She kept saying that Subaru saved her. I want to know what that is all about. I'm a little pissed he didn't bother to ask. And I was super not about her the first time that she showed up in person when she was doing the big bendy waifu ice do thing. Like, no, <clears throat> no. But when she's not being full yandere psychopath, she's great. She's one of the characters who I think has Subaru's best interests at heart the most. Even, I would say, more so than Amelia. So yes, A tier waifu. Sekhmet. I, I wish we'd seen more of her. This is getting a common theme. I wish we would see more. And mostly, that's just because this was originally, I believe, meant to air continuously throughout the whole second season. There wasn't supposed to be a break. So we would have, I guess, seen more of these characters. But no, uh, Sekhmet was one of the first ones to stand up for Subaru at the end. I like her character design a lot. Really cool. 
Plus, she's got the whole sleepy wife thing going on. Yeah, no, she, she's good. She's good enough for the C tier. She's, she's right up there in the middle. I guess C is actually a little bit above the middle on this chart. Teresia, okay, yeah, she was really cool. I didn't love the white whale arc that much. Teresia was my favorite part of that arc. Just really solid waifu. I love that she is sitting there the whole time watching Wilhelm, like, trying to learn how to master the sword and be great, and the whole time she's like, I could clean the floor with you. But, but she wasn't actually thinking that. So when she just comes out as this massive badass, it's even cooler. Because she had the capability the whole time. She was just like, eh, you know, I'm not really feeling it. I'll do it when I have to. That was that was just badass. She goes in B tier. She's really great. Wish she wasn't dead. Okay, Typhon. I I think I am every bit as afraid of Typhon as I am of Daphne. She's just like this existential lowly of abject terror. That first moment when she touches Subaru and he just like falls to pieces. No thank you. I will I'll be having none of this. I don't want anything to do with that. However, as with some of the rest of the witches, she did stand up for Subaru and I think more so than anyone except Minerva. She was actually very angry with Echidna as well. So I'm not going to give her the F tier, but I don't like her enough to make her not sit with Priscilla. So she's going in the E tier, mostly just because I am terrified of her. Okay, so there you have it. This tells us one of two things if you look at the shape of this. Either A, this show is heavily stacked with waifus, or B, I'm far too generous. I'm really inclined to believe it's the first one, just because all of the character designs here are so unique, so distinct. They all have really differing personalities. And I'm amazing it's able to juggle this many waifus, especially this season where it dumped all of the seven witches on us. And they're all awesome, even if that awesomeness comes in the form of being horrifying rather than being a waifu. Typhon and Daphne are scarier than Betelgeuse was, for me personally. It's just terrifying. The disconnect between the cute lowly and existential horror just really freaks me out. I, I've not read the the light novel, or I believe this was a web novel before, correct me if I'm wrong on that. But anyway, I've not read any of ReZero, I'm just watching the anime, so I don't know how much more of the witches we get. I'm a little bit concerned that this was like the meet the witches arc, and we're not going to see that much of them from here on out. Because I think we did kind of need Echidna as the connection to access most of them. But out of all the characters here, they're the ones that I want to see more of the most. Which is weird, because this whole season started with Krush losing her memories, and I thought that was going to be such an important plot point, especially for me, since I love Krush so much. And I, I don't care right now. Like, there are so many other things going on that I just don't care. Obviously, there are a million things that we could talk about this season. Character development in this season was so good. At first, I thought it was really slow. I didn't like having the whole 13 episodes dedicated to just one time loop. But now I'm so glad they did. Oh my god, it was just such a good season. But instead of talking about all of the complexities of the writing and how well it subverted our expectations, instead I'm me, so I'm talking about waifus. You know what you're here for. At least I'm upholding expectations for being a degenerate, so it's whatever. But yeah, thanks for coming by and watching. I hope you now realize how wrong you are with whatever your waifu picks were unless you like Minerva and Krush, in which case we're buds and you're right. Drop a comment down below and let me know who your S tier picks would have been and who your F tier picks would have been, because I think those are the ones that I'm most interested in seeing. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notifications, and I'll hook you up with all sorts of awesome anime content like generic waifu tier lists. And until next time, I've been Spoons. Thank you for watching.